Um, I hope you're all having a wonderful day, and I want to welcome you all to our webinar today. We're very fortunate to have Alyssa Best from the Op-Ed Project here with us today. Alyssa is currently the Op-Ed Project's East Coast Program Manager based in Washington, D.C. She is a local social entrepreneur, career coach, and writer passionate about building leadership for social change. She has conducted outreach and promoted training programs at Wider Opportunities for Women, the Center for Progressive Leadership, and the Institute for Women's Leadership at Rutgers University. She holds a Master's of Arts in Women's and Gender Studies from <coughs> Rutgers. Her writing has, been, has appeared in mainstream and scholarly media, including the Huffington Post. She also contributes to a group blog on career issues called Love Your Job, Love Your Life. Um, thank you, Alyssa, for um, taking your time today and speaking with us. Just as a reminder, I just want to let you all know that feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation using the chat feature. Um, Alyssa will also be taking um, some pauses throughout the presentation to ask for questions. And um, I pass the presentation along to Alyssa. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so, so much, Patricia, uh, as well as the, the rest of the team for the invitation to be with you all today. It's such a pleasure. And it's also really wonderful to, um, to be speaking after uh, the wonderful Tabby Biddle uh, following her webinar. She's actually someone who um, uh, came to um, our seminar in L.A. and is a part of our community. Uh, so it just felt uh, very fortuitous to follow in her tracks as well. Um, so as Patricia mentioned, I work with the Op-Ed Project and uh, what we do and why we do it. And then want to launch into um, some of the more of the components um, and uh, some strategies around actually how to uh, create an argument, how to create an opinion piece. Uh, I know that one of the things that I was tasked with today is to um, think about how to take you know, the blogging that you're already doing and how to integrate more commentary, more of a commentary bent to it or more of an opinion uh, orientation to the piece. We're going to talk through that. Uh, I'm going to pull up one of my op-eds that I wrote um, on the Huffington Post last year on the uh, uh, the new Twilight, what was at the time the newest Twilight movie, and uh, as a way to kind of workshop some of the ideas that we're going to be talking about. And then I also want to pull up one of the recent blog posts that you all wrote um, on your blog and talk about some of the elements that are already um, you know, that are already really there to form an outline of um, how you can kind of turn that piece into more of an opinion. Um, and as Patricia mentioned, you know, I, I'm, I welcome comments and questions and as well as for people to um, unmute yourself if you have a question and want to speak live on the webinar as well. So in getting started, um, so what we identify uh, as the problem in terms of our work with the Op-Ed Project is that the voices that we hear most in the world come from an extremely narrow slice of society. It's mostly Western, it's mostly privileged, it's mostly white, and it's overwhelmingly male. We have a little fun visual. Uh, although we love John Malkovich, nothing wrong with him, um, just sort of a, a visual to represent uh, the, the, the faces, so to speak, of, um, of many of the, of the thought leaders you know, on the Op-Ed pages. I know I Myself, uh, is living in the Washington, D.C. area, subscribe to the, the Washington Post, and there are many days I open it up and look at the op-ed page and see, you know, mail, 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 mail. I think there's one woman today, uh, in our yesterday's paper, rather, um, uh, who's a, one of the, the top women. But this is, you know, often what we, uh, you know, the voices that we're hearing from in the world. Um, and, you know, the question that we pose is, what is the cost to society if so many voices and minds are missing from the conversation or missing from public debate? So we see the opportunity, um, you know, what could we accomplish if we invested in all of this missing brain power, all of this missing, you know, women's brain power? And, um, you know, this, this trend is unfortunately not, um, you know, not exclusive to, uh, to the op-ed pages. It's something that we're seeing across the board from uh, recently, uh, not too long ago, uh, the New York Times published a piece about how Wikipedia um, features only 13% uh, of women contributors, even though that's an open source um, you know, space where you don't have to pitch, you don't have to be, um, you know, it's, it's not exclusive in that regard where anyone can go on and contribute, but um, even despite that, only you know, women only contribute 13% of the time on Wikipedia. So I don't know about you, but there are many things that I go on to Wikipedia to find out, you know, some quick tip of, you know, some quick note about a celebrity or, 
you know, or, or a landmark or whatever it may be, and that, you know, the overwhelmingly the information that I'm getting is posted by men. Um, of course, we know that, you know, that women are, um, you know, are uh, disproportionately not represented in terms of Hollywood and writers, producers, and directors, only 14%. Um, of course, um, you know, women in Congress and in corporate boards. Uh, so we see that there's sort of this, like, 13 to 17% uh, representation across all these various forums, um, and uh, and that our goal is really if we can get uh, women's you know women's overshare overall share voice to a tipping point to 30 33 percent, we feel like this you know this will actually start to create a sea change in public debate. So why are there so few women represented? It's an age-old question. Um, it goes from you know there, there's conversations from, I think, uh, especially those of you based in Boston <laughs> um, that will be particularly tuned to the comments that Larry Summers uh, remarked from uh, what Susan Estrich, the syndicated column, um, columnist, was really the one to, to kind of kickstart this conversation as well on why are so few women represented on the op-ed pages uh, to Boring Dow. And, um, you know, despite the ongoing debate, no one has solved the problem. It's, um, you know, it's really vast. And it's hard to, you know, have hard to, to gain traction around the solution. So what, where we come in is that we, you know, we feel like the solution can be much simpler. Um, what if we just get more, you know, smart women writing uh, and broadcasting their voice and, and pitching pieces on a much, much larger level? Uh, a couple years back, the Washington Post tracked submissions for five months um, of, you know, in terms of op-ed pieces that were submitted to the Post, and. Um, their, you know, their uh, statistics reflect that 90% men submit versus 10% women, and that as a result, 88% 80, of, of men were represented in the byline uh, versus 12% women. Uh, so it's actually a, almost a one-to-one -one ratio of the number of submissions to, um, you know, to actually what is featured on the op-ed pages. Um, and so, you know, we feel like one one way that we can kind of tackle this problem is. That simply women don't submit, so how can we get more and more smart women uh, to, to be submitting and get their voices out there? And that's what's so exciting about being with you all today because you're already doing this. You have this blog, you're you know, already um, you know, getting you know, great content and great information and resources out there to, you know, to a wider community. Um, and you know, in terms of why does this matter, you know, why, you know, in terms of the, the, the disproportionate number of men to women who are represented in these, in these um, commentary pieces is that, um, you know, a piece in the Washington Post is, is really an issue, or in any, you know, paper, a local paper, you know, we define these, you know, mediums in a very broad way, um, is really an entry point to the, you know, the gateway to um, thought leadership in a much larger way. Uh, it's really a front door into the marketplace of ideas, um, and it's, you know, that getting your pieces, you know, and your ideas out there in, in, in a larger way is, is really one of the fastest ways to advance a new idea of public value, and this is where we see um, how thought leadership begins. And it can be, you know, it can be tricky to, to really determine how does influence um, on a large scale accrue. You know, how does a sort of a, uh, a nugget of an idea, you know, really get um, gain traction and, and get out there and, and, and sort of increase in terms of its value and contribution. And so here's a, a, a visual representation of how we see that happening. So with you, the, what you all are doing right now, uh, blogging, um, sort of this, this strong blogging core, um, that starting you know at that level on the left, uh, where you're you know that you may be getting picked up and getting viral, going viral. You know people may be liking your piece on Facebook. It may be um, picked up and, um, and and placed on other blogs. People may be retweeting you know uh, links to your blog, and that this is really where it starts. And then, you know, maybe as a result of a blog, someone's going, to, an expert is going to cite something that they saw that you all are doing. And then that's going to get picked up. And then perhaps, um, you know, some, a producer of a, of a television show or a journalist might get, might, you know, uh, get, get wind of that. And then that may, you know, that may get you more exposure. And as a result of that, um, you know, something, maybe a piece that's on the news actually would result in funding. It might actually result in policy change. Um, and this is where, you know, you go from credibility to exposure to influence in a much larger way. So, um, you know, we see sort of that as kind of the domino effect of how this is, uh, how thought leadership uh, works and how your influence and your ability to change the world really does expand um, in this way. 